yo what's going on guys today we have an actual more formal grand blue fantasy video it's been a long time since i've made a video like this due to the fact that i've been putting a lot of time in dragalia loss i believe i'm i'm now rank 101 in dragalia loss so i do plan on making a video on dragalia about how i feel about the game now that i've reached rank 100 but that's not what we're here to talk about today. What we're here to talk about is my fire team. So I was asked for somebody to, uh, for somebody, ugh, my fault. I'm not retaking this, but someone asked me on what I was going to run for GW. And I was like, why not make it a video and explain what I'll be running for, GD, uh, for GW and my setups and stuff. So you may notice in the background that you do see Rune Slayer, you may have guessed it, but yes, I'll be running Rune Slayer for GW. The one benefit of running Rune Slayer is that it does have an option for most things in the game, so it's a pretty versatile class. Not the best class, but it's pretty versatile. Um, originally, I was going to run Luchador, however, I kind of like Rune Slayer's aesthetic a lot. I like the way it looks main character's smile really makes me happy not to mention like the actual battle animations in the game when i get to do a fight with it you'll see it's really nice so because of that i was like i'm gonna play rune slayer and if it goes bad it goes bad but i'm gonna stick to my guns and play what makes me happy now with rune slayer you do see that below the characters i'll be running are Rhea, anilla and Esser. So let's talk about Greya. Greya is my substitution slot. So in this team, two slots are mandatory and one slot is open. Open being that depending on what gimmicks are triggers the boss can hit me with, I may swamp her out for a better unit that's more suitable for taking on the boss. Right now, Greya does have the ability to bring the spell though i'll talk about why i don't really need it nearly as much later on but do know that Greya does have the ability to bring the spell now you may note that i see it's not plus 300 i haven't gotten that yet to get all my units to plus 300 so hopefully in the future i may end up getting her to plus 300 and then i'll have all my units plus 300. now we're going to look at her emp really quick I want to make sure that everyone understands the EMP that I'm running on the unit and what I run overall. Now with Greya, I've made her more charge attack oriented because I was using her for one turn for EX+. Plus. So because of that, I kind of focused a little bit on that more than anything else. That's why you may see a couple of nodes in charge attack damage. Her support skill isn't bad per se, but I kind of went against it because I do have the Ultima, not to mention a Nulla. So she already has a really high base multi-attack. So I was like, it's not really worth it for me. Currently these are her, or her, what is he called again? I don't remember what these are called, like the ring bonus. But right now she has pretty average ring bonus. I tried to roll something better on her but I was not really able to, though this is pretty decent. Uh, one thing I would like to mention about defense is that it doesn't really help my build overall, so that kind of sucks, but you gotta make do what you have, and this is what I have, and I'll make do with it. One second. Now, need a little bit of water. Now the next character we'll be looking at is Anilla. Anilla is a mandatory slot, because I'm running Magnifier, Anilla is pretty much crucial to my team's overall damage output. So I can't really change her out. Not to mention that Anilla does bring a lot of utility and delay a heal and defense down and attack down. Therefore, she's a crucial element to my team and she will not be changed out. She is plus 300 because, you know, I, I do have enough pluses to get her to 300. Now we're gonna take a look, quick look at her EMP skills. Now Anilla is a very peculiar unit. 
Her EMPs are actually very lackluster overall. Her having pretty much defensive EMPs really hurts my build as I do need my team to take damage overall. Although she's not really good at that due to her passive being the damage reduction against wind units. And, uh, and her EMPs is having a lot of tankiness to it. Honestly, I recommend being more defensive on her though, where your EMPs, if you're running something like Agni, though since I run Magna, I am more a little bit offensive, though I do get points in defense because why not? These are my keys on my uh, rings on her. They're pretty decent to be honest. It's not bad. This problem with CA damage cap is that Anilla doesn't hit that hard without her buffs and a crit, so... You don't see that too much in high level content, though in low level content like guild wards, you should hit it no problem. And double attack is pretty nice on her, though her buff does get 50% double attack, therefore you pretty much cap double attack all the time with this character, so it's almost impossible for me to see her single attack, which is really nice, you know, I never get to see a single attack on her, I ain't complaining. And for the final unit, it's another guarantee slot in Escher. Escher has a lot of utility. Not only does he come with blind, he comes with the all around break ability. Though the break ability is only really helping her out in this team. This team, is, she's not really doing a lot with that break ability. But her skill 4 is nuts. It's still a nutty skill that's on fair amount of damage. And now that's any time, can't go wrong with her. Not to mention that she does have another anytime assassin in her skill too. Pretty good unit with 100% TA that makes up for her lack of synergy with this team since she's the only non-fist unit. Her skill one is just there to hit more damage than you already hit, but other than that, overall, pretty solid unit and that's why she's there. Now we're gonna take a little look at her EMPs. Uh, Esther's pretty standard run-of-the-mill EMPs. With Esther, one thing I will note is that her support ability is a normal mod, so that's why I run this on my Magna build. Agni, you won't get much out of it, though. It's better than nothing. Her break is pretty cool as well. I believe her break does proc with her onslaught debuff, so that's nice. I probably would invest a little bit more in multi-attack if I had more nodes, but I don't have more nodes. I am not going to use the... the marriage ring on her because I don't use any of those as of now. I don't feel any content requires them, so I just hold them and hoard them until we get to a point where I actually need to use them. So Amira is my back unit because of her attack boosting ability. The fact that she can randomly boost attack for the team, a normal mod, pretty decent for Magna. Uh, it can be a little bit annoying when she keeps coming out, but not bad at all. And Elisa is in the back unit. Uh, that unit slot is subject to change. I don't know. I may put a character like Charlotta in there for charge bar, but that that slot is definitely changeable. She's just there because she's a fire unit at the moment. And yes, yeah, she should be slot five and she should be slot four. Um, let me make that change right now, really quick, actually, before I forget. Sometimes I end up forgetting to change things out, so I just want to change it really quickly so I don't forget. Okay. <laughs> Only reason it has to be slot 5, so in case that like one unit in the front dies, which is pretty much really hard, but in case one unit dies, he comes in right after. Now, we're going to be looking at my weapons. Uh, my weapons are actually pretty standard, run to the mill. I am running the Ultima Claw as my main weapon. It actually has skill cap on it. Uh, I may change this out for GW. I'm running skill cap now because my team all do have nukes, so it's not bad. So that's why I'm running it at the moment. Though I may change it out for OG damage. Depends on what the boss does, but right now skill damage does pretty well for me. You can see I'm running the regular twig build. I believe I mentioned in the video that I was wanted to swamp out the canes, but due to the fact that I spent so much time on Dragolia loss. I haven't really been farming hard in Grand Blue, so because of that, I just kept my twigs. Twigs aren't like awful, like impossible to use, 
but you do have a lot of RNG in your damage. Though, since DW is a little bit different than normal content in the game, since it has really low defense, with the SIP buff, I should be able to cap uh, even on non crit with another buff. But I'm hoping. I don't know, but I'm, I believe I should be able to cap even no crit on another buffs. Thanks to the ship buff, though. Without it, you, you're pretty be lacking in damage. Now, another thing you may note is I have five twig instead of six. The six twig, um, the reason I didn't put it in is because I'm not actually looking for more crit damage. My crits already cap. I'm looking for more base damage so that I have the ability to cap on base hits. So with the six twig, I get more crits, which is nice for consistency. But when I don't crit, my damage falls quite a bit. So I'm running two Xenos to make up for that. So I may have less crit, but when I do, when I don't crit, I hit a lot more. Now the Primark is pretty standard. Since, uh, since Esther is my only unit with the Primark passive, that means that I need to run the unit. I need to run the weapon for my main character, Anilla and Greya. Bahamut is the Bahamut Spear because it benefits Draft and Earn. So because it benefits those two races and I run two of them and Greya is unknown, that's why I run it. Now, my summons, uh, you may note that I do have Michael now. I end up pulling Michael in a 10 pull. I actually posted on Twitter. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I do recommend following me on Twitter. Uh, if you want to keep up with stuff, not to mention my Discord also works too. I did post that there as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I am running Colossus because Colossus is my main summon because my pool is Magna. You can main note that my son is now four star. I ended up four starring it recently, which I'm very happy about. Just in time for GW. Really nice to have the whole good effect of all three units getting that multi attack, well, that double attack boost. Pretty nice. Great skill. Uh, Bahamut's here because of stat stick. Uh, ideally, I wish I had another Shiva or my own Shiva actually, so I could put Shiva here, but I don't. So I'm just using Bahamut for stat stick. I may change it out with a Thor. I actually have a full limit break Thor now. I ended up full limit breaking my Thor not too long ago. So, depending on what the boss does, I can bring Thor for another dispel. So, if the boss like triggers at the end and then it like gets the fence up or something, I may end up bringing I may end up bringing Thor instead. And Typhon is just because Typhon has decent stats as well, and it's called the bad being able to dodge the um triggers really nice, not triggers the OG. It doesn't stop triggers. But that's pretty much my team in um, a nutshell. Uh, we're going to do actually low defense content. Neja, Neja, my fault. Because GW is more low defense, it's actually more of a better, uh, I, don't, I don't know where I'm looking for right now, a better judgment, I guess. I'll see how the team would perform as if I was to do high level content, that's not really what GW is about. It's actually more towards low level content like Magna. So that's what I plan on doing. And let's get to the content right now. Now you see I'm running Splitting Spirit on my character. Normally I wouldn't run Splitting Spirit. I'll actually run Arrow Rain 3. But for this, because it's going to be really quick, I ran Splitting Spirit. Um, so we're gonna hit that. Hit this. Hit this. I like so I like the men max really really hard. So I always go in the order of skills whenever I can. Now that's just me. Not everyone not everyone wanna do that, but I do it. Break assassin. I guess you could hit Gray as skill too. Doesn't really hurt. Just use the sun. It's pretty cool. Also, the ultimate doesn't show any weapon, so that's a thing. Not 700k autos yet. 
We're almost there, though. Um, should Esther have been my slot three? I don't know. Probably, to be honest. I didn't really think about that. I kind of, I kind of just maxed out my son, so I kind of forgot that. So I may put Esther slot three. Anula does well too, but I think Esther would probably be a little bit better in this scenario. I should have used um. Anilla's stamina buff, but I kind of forgot. So do forgive me for that. <sighs> Ray got two magic circles really fast. So pretty cool. I don't know who Ogi. Okay, I think I don't mind it. I think I like this Ogi a lot. One of my favorite Ogis in the game. So you can see that Michael does kick in really well. I like it a lot. Uh, oh, we actually didn't cap the fence down. Now think about it. Because we didn't use Colossus. So what you were seeing there was not cap the fence down. I, I just now remember that. That's actually pretty good. Not to mention we are missing 20% damage right now. So that multi pack there was pretty lackluster. Could have that could have been a little bit better on the multi attack in my opinion. Um, so actually, I'm going to use water here. I try to use other elements now so that I can gain more match circles for Esther's skill four. If I can. Uh, defense down. So now Nilla buffs are gone, so our damage is going to drop a little bit. I don't believe Nilla procs her passive, so that kind of sucks. So you can see that no Nilla feels bad, man. Nilla being such a core aspect of the team makes her very important for maxing out our damage. Overall, the enemy's not bad, though. I don't think we're going to get enough time to hit our, uh, maxed out. Our skill 4. I could be wrong, though, but I don't think we're going to get enough time on it. You think it's for the delay right now. It also comes with the spell, too. Well, mainly just get for the delay. Throw the K auto pretty, though. I do believe we can hit a little bit harder than that, though. I could be wrong. But I believe we should be able to hit a little bit harder than that. I, I did mess up Siva early on. So I did forget to cap the punch down. So this raid probably could have been done by now. We are actually going to hit this passive now. So I might as well. I do believe we should be killing it this turn, or if not next turn. Well, next turn. Oh, we got Sun again? Oh yeah, that's overkill. Oh, oh rest, rest, ooh, two million. He's a frolic. Rest in peace, Esser. But yeah, this is going to be my game plan for TW, more or less, what I plan on running. The only problem is that I did forget defense down. If I call Sun turn 1, I actually can't hit defense down. Cap turn 1, I believe I hit 45. So I got to figure out a way to do that. I don't know if I'll bring break or defense breach or something. I do want to cap defense down turn 1, but I probably have to figure out something about that. Why does that have to be a really long video? Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I wasn't actually expecting it to take that long, but it ended up taking that long. So, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope it was informative, and I'll see you guys next time. On next time will probably be a couple days from now. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Bye.